everyone, it's Alice and today we are doing my annual beginning of the year fiction TBR. I do one of these every year. I'm not always that great at sticking to them but I do try my best and I find it really motivating and like satisfying to make like a big TBR at the beginning of a new year. This year though I have tried to pick books that I've had on my shelves for a while in an effort to maybe try and get to some of my older books this year because I have a tendency to get distracted by newer shinier books and I have a lot <laughs> on my sort of backlist TBR that I really want to try and get to. Anyway, so let's just get into it. First up we have a book that I've had for maybe two three years. It's Middle Game by Shauna McGuire and I think that this is a kind of like fantasy science fiction-y type thing with a little bit of horror to it which sounds like a great mix to me. I'm pretty sure this is about an alchemist of some sort who creates these twins and how this person does that I have no idea but they end up having like superpowers so one is really good with math and numbers and the other is really good with language. How that manifests like in their powers I don't know and what they do with these powers I also don't know but it sounds very intriguing and it mentions on the back here like shadowy organizations and impossible cities and all of it sounds very intriguing and a little weird and unlike anything else I've ever read. I have heard a lot of good things about this though so I'm excited to try it. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna like it. I will say though that I thought that this book was a standalone. Like I'm pretty sure when I bought it I was like extra excited because it was a fantasy standalone and sometimes those can be a little bit difficult to find but now I feel like I've seen somewhere that it's in a series but I don't know. I guess I'll read it and find out. Secondly, we have 50 Words for Rain by Asha Lemmy and this is historical fiction and to be honest I kind of forgot that I had this <laughs> and I saw it on my shelves the other day and I was like oh yeah I have that book I should try it and I feel like I've had it for so long that I either need to just read it now or I need to get rid of it but I really want to try it because it does sound really good. This starts off in Japan in the 1940s like the late 1940s and we follow this illegitimate child of a Japanese aristocrat and her African-American lover and I think this main character is abandoned by her mother at quite a young age but then she's taken in by her grandparents but it's not really done in an act of love like her grandparents kind of want to conceal her from the world because I guess her existence is like shameful or it threatens their reputation or something like that which like what are you doing? I think the main character's life changes though when she meets her half-brother who is the heir in this family and they have this amazing bond and that's all I really know. It says that it spans continents and generations and it just sounds interesting and I do like a book that follows like a character throughout their whole lives or most of their lives and yeah I just need to try it. Then we have got We Are All The Same In The Dark by Julia Heberlin and this is set in a small town in Texas where this girl disappeared a decade ago and I think we're following her brother who was initially accused of having something to do with the disappearance but then he was cleared but he's still like a pariah in town because the people there still believe that he had something to do with it. I think he ends up in the beginning of this book finding this lost girl in a field and this sets everything into motion. I think she's a mute and this raises a lot of questions like who is she? Where did she come from? What happened to her? Is her case like related to this other disappearance and all of that and it says that this like their discovery of this girl threatens to unearth long buried secrets in this small town which sounds amazing I love a good small town setting I love that like secrets in a small community type thing I love a good mystery so I just feel like this is gonna be the perfect mix for me. Next we have Daughter of Fortune by Isabel Allende and I got this book because I want to read more by this author because I've read some books by her and a couple of them I've really really liked so I got this and then I didn't read it which is the story of my life. This follows a woman who was orphaned at birth and she grows up in this British colony in Chile and she's brought up or like taken in 
by these Victorian people. I don't think they're a couple. I think it's a sister and a brother. And I'm sure that upbringing is quite interesting. And then she ends up falling in love with this like kind of sketchy guy and ends up following him to San Francisco in the middle of like the gold rush. One of the things I really like about Allende is the writing and the way that she writes characters. And one of the other books that I've read by her that I loved also had this setup where we're following a main character throughout most of their lives. And I just think it's really interesting. I like how she writes main characters and like how you get to be inside of their heads. So this sounds perfect for me. It kind of sounds like the other book that I read that I really liked. So I'm sure it's gonna be good. I just need to read it. Then we have this beautiful book. This is We Are All Birds of Uganda by Hafsa Saya. And this is also historical fiction, but I think it's one of those books that has dual timelines. So one is set in 1960s Uganda and the other is set in like present day London. In the 1960s perspective, we're following this man who is trying to rebuild his life after his wife has passed away. And while he's trying to do that, this new regime seizes power in the country and this threatens like everything that he's built. In the present day perspective, we're following, I think, a young lawyer who is kind of like lost in life and then he unexpectedly has to go home because I think it's like a tragedy or something has happened and this changes everything for him. I think these two characters sound like interesting people and I'm interested to like see their journeys and the setting sounds really interesting and I think this explores like race, generational divides home and belonging and all of those things are always interesting to read about. So very excited about this. I'm also excited about the writing style. I have this feeling that I'm really going to like it. Next we have There There by Tommy Orange. And this is like contemporary literary fiction. And I've heard amazing things about this book. It follows a group of Native Americans who are gathering together for this like cultural event in Oakland, I think. And I think we're following like several different characters in here, which is intriguing. I think two of them are siblings who really relied on each other when they were growing up. And as adults, they've sort of drifted apart, but I'm guessing maybe they come together at this event. We have this woman who has struggled with addiction and she wants to reconnect with her family. We have some person who's there to like, gather stories in honor of his family but then it also says that someone has showed up with darker intentions and i don't know what those intentions are but it's going to be interesting to find out i just think this sounds very interesting and i've heard a lot of good reviews about this it was a while ago that i saw those reviews though but yeah it sounds like an interesting setting interesting characters and I'm excited to try it. Then we've had a book that I've had for maybe like four or five years. It's The Lesser Bohemians by Emer McBride. And this is, I don't know if it's contemporary fiction. I think it's set in the 1990s, like mid 1990s. And most of it takes place in London. So I don't know if you could call that contemporary fiction, but it's not really historical. I don't know. It's a fiction novel. We're following this main character in here though who is an aspiring actress and she goes to London, I think she's from Ireland, and she goes to London to go to drama school and she's struggling a little bit to like find her place but then she makes some friends and seems to settle down and then everything changes when she meets this man who I think she falls madly in love with and he is like 20 years her senior and this changes like her whole life and I'm, I have a feeling that it doesn't just change it for the good and it'll be interesting. It says it's about sexual passion and innocence and the loss of it, which is interesting. It's also apparently a little bit dark. And again, I think this is one of those books that at this point I need to read it or get rid of it, but I do really want to at least try it. Moving on, we have this, which I feel like I actually haven't had for that long, but I really want to get to it. It's Transcendent Kingdom by Yagyasi. And I got this book mostly just because I read 
another book by Gyasi and I really really liked it. This follows a family where I think the parents of the family originally came from Ghana and they made their way to America and they had a family and we're following mostly I think the daughter of this family who is studying neuroscience and her mission in life is to find like a scientific reason for all the suffering that she sees around her. Her mother is suicidal, her brother died of a drug overdose, and I think she's just trying to find some answers in her work. But then I think the story sort of takes a turn and she starts like looking into her childhood and her childhood faith and maybe finding some answers there. I don't really know, but it sounds like it has a lot of interesting themes in it. Second to last, we have On Earth, We're Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vong. And to be totally honest with you, I feel like I've never been able to fully grasp what this book is about, but I think it explores a mother-son relationship. And it's kind of like contemporary fiction poetry. Ask. The thing that I'm most intrigued about this though is the writing because I've heard that the writing style of this author is very particular and I feel like it's one of those writing styles that could either work for me really well or I'm just not gonna like it at all. I think sometimes with like super poetic writing it can get a little bit vague which I don't always like but when this kind of writing is good it really hits the spot for me so I just want to try it and see if this author is for me. I've had this book for a while and I've seen that he's come out with some other books that could be interesting potentially, but I want to read this first and give it a go to see. Lastly, we have The Savage Instinct by M.M. DeLuca and this is like historical fiction, but it has like a gothic vibe to it and I think it veers a little bit into horror and I had some success reading these types of books last year so I really want to give this a go. It's set in England in the 1870s and we meet this woman who has just come out from spending a year in an insane asylum and she wants to reunite with her husband which I think she does and when she like gets home she finds her like her marriage a little bit oppressive and she really doesn't want to go back to the asylum, obviously. And I think something happens where she becomes obsessed with this serial killer of the time. I think it's a female serial killer. And then things just get a little bit crazy. I feel like this is one of those like unhinged women that we get to read about. And I think that's really interesting and I really want to read more of those kinds of books. Okay, everyone, that was my whole stack. I'd love to know if any of you have read any of these books and what you thought and if there are any books you thought were like particularly good that you think I should prioritize. I would love to hear about it. I'd also love to know if there are any fiction books in 2024 you are really excited to get to. And as always, thank you very much for hanging out with me today and I will see you soon. Bye!